Zero 2017 Men's Day Choir. Give your name to praise. Amen. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Yes. Must Jesus bear the cross alone, and all the world go free? Yes. For there's a cross for everyone, yes. and there's a cross for me. Yes. More holy than that, and Father, won't you forgive us for our sins, Heavenly Father? Yes. Forgive us for the thing we said that we shouldn't have said, Heavenly Father. Yes. 
Forgive us for the place we're going, we shouldn't have gone, Heavenly Father. Then, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this men's day, Heavenly Father. We want to thank you for everything that you have done for us, Heavenly Father, and the things that you're about to do for us, Heavenly Father. In the name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.
Let the church say amen. Amen. It sounds like they're in concert form early this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. I'm just working with Anthony to work my solo in. <laughs> amen, somebody. Amen. amen. At this time, we want to recognize and, and, and acknowledge our visitors who may be visiting us for the first time. If you're visiting us for the first time, will you stand and just remain standing? You're visiting for the first time. Stand and remain standing. Amen. 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 Brother Pedro is going to come now and give you a special welcome to our church. Amen. Come on, Brother Pedro. Good morning, Centurion. Welcome to Dalton Church, Men's Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for what you done for us. Amen. And if we say, Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, Lord Pedro. All right. What a special welcome. We praise God much and mighty. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you that we're having a wonderful time in our noonday and evening Bible study. Where you please join us on Wednesday at 12 noon and at 6 o'clock in the evening. Our Girl Scouts are now registered for enrollment for ages K-5 through 12th grade. And they meet on the first and third Saturday of each month. Enter the girls in their pants and contact the church office at contract sister Andrina Scott. Our senior citizen interest in and out into the state fair on Wednesday, October 11th. Actually, sign up in the vestry, and the van will leave the church at 1 o'clock p.m. Amen. Amen. On yesterday, our men had an excellent prayer breakfast on yesterday. Amen. 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 Some 60 something men attended the prayer breakfast, and Brother Clarence and Anthony and staff treated us to shrimp yeah. and grits and sausage. Yes. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yes. Amen. We didn't have the standard prayer breakfast like other groups do. <laughs> we had some great time and fellowship. And the men have been excited and on fire, and we just had a great time this year working together. And we also, I think, is, no, is that date November 13, Brother Coleman? Yes, yes. Stand up, Brother Coleman. The men decided that we we're going to a football game in Charlotte. See, we, yeah. we, we, we don't just go out on shopping trips. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone to Charlotte's Panthers football game, and then it's going to be the game that's nationally televised yeah. with the Miami Dolphins. Amen. If you're interested in going and see Brother Coleman, we've already think I've just about sold out the first group. We're working on a second group. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And somebody asked the question, well, Pastor, what about women? They love football too, right? Amen. Well, y'all should have done that during the women's day. <laughs> <laughs> this is when the brethren will get together. Amen. So we're looking for a great time of fellowship. Amen. Let's prepare to give back to the Lord a portion of the Lord is blessing with. The one thing I want to do first. Stephen, when you pull up our church, first go to the website. When you go to our church website, which is Central Baptist Columbia.org, just Central Baptist Columbia.org, you have the icons that come on. Then clip up on the one that says resource. Well, you said resource, then drop down to the newsletter. Because what we're doing now is, we're, and click on the first part of that where it says newsletter, so you see right up on the central map, so click right there. Where it says Central Baptist Newsletter with that icon, click on there. Go up put it right there. And go down to open. That's the first edition of our new online newsletter. 
Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Our online newsletter from the Central Baptist Church will be published every quarter. And on that online newsletter, you will go up on the day, you'll be able to read all the events of the church that's happening during the quarter. There's a message from the pastor and the pastor's opinion. There's a note to all of our students who are going back to school. You go over the next page, you got our seniors corner with information on our seniors. Go to the, keep scrolling up, next page. There you go. Seniors corner, then we got a calendar of all church events for the month. But this coming up, that's listed, then the men's day activities were listed there. Keep scrolling up next month. The marking period, all the young people who made the honor roll. We have their names included. Parents, take this page out when you print it. Put it in a scrapbook. Keep accomplish, keep track of your children's accomplishments. Amen. So you will let them know how proud you are of what they are accomplished. Let's scroll to the next page. On the next page, we have information on homestead exemption, information for disabled veterans exemption, prisoner of war, all that information is there for you. Uh, and then we have member highlights. There we are highlighting a special article on Deacon S. Margaret Flores, who's been selected to be the mission, our president of our mission. It's going to be honored at a banquet on October 20 by the Get Assembly Association. We have a welcome home edition there where we're welcoming Brother Courtland Thomas back home and talk about the achievements he's accomplished. It's just a wonderful newsletter. And, and we did not want to just have the blue color and the gold color for us. We want you to print it in any color you want. <laughs> so if you're deaf, so you want red and white, get your red and white paper. <laughs> AKA you want pink and green, get your paper. <laughs> uh, we, don't, we didn't want to do that for you. We wanted you to have the choice of your own paper, your own color, and your own ribbon to come out. Amen, somebody. But we're going to get some copies and make them available for our seniors. But we want to make somebody ought to say amen. We're going to get some copies and make them available for our seniors. And we're going to add different things in the future. We'll have a legal column in now. Dick S. Uh, Johnson, we may have Montgomery from time to time to do a copy on finances. We want to have a broad thing in there. We want to highlight our youth and highlight their achievements and some of the things that they're doing. And we think this online newsletter is going to be a great communication tool for us. Amen. Amen. I'm in jail. Let me introduce our newsletter staff to you. Cynthia, what are you saying? Uh, Sister Brenda Carter, who normally worship with us at 11 o'clock. Uh, Sister Ashton Cunningham, where you staying? Okay. My wife, Cricket, where you staying? Sabrina Jackson and Brittany Jones. Now, you know y'all are a special group because we haven't introduced some women on men day. <laughs> Let's give our staff a wonderful hand. Amen. I think you will enjoy the reading that's in there. It's information, and we want to make sure we keep you informed about what's going on with our church family. Amen. Read it. Tell someone about it. And I think you'll be excited. Give us ideas, give us comments in order that we can make things better and provide the information that you're needing. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. The songwriter had it best when the songwriter said, truly you cannot be God-given no matter how hard you try. The more you give to God, the more God gives back to us. I've learned that our blessings are not always material. And please, ma'am, please, sir, don't get to the point where you're married and you're blessing about somebody else's blessing. Amen. God blesses each one of us differently according to measure, according to what we are able to handle. Our responsibility is to be faithful. First Corinthians 4 and 2 is more of what is required of a steward, is that a steward be found faithful. Now, this offering is not our men's day offering. We will come back and gift that. This is strictly God's tithes and our offering. You cannot get in the realm of giving an offering until you first get in the realm of giving God his tithe. Amen. Let us stay. Brother, we all open the doors and check the vessel.
Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion there which you have blessed us with. Thank you for this opportunity right now. For the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, but he that sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you through giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Outside our face of walls, inside our face each other, follow the direction of our usher. If you talking about a good time, we gonna have a time. If you talking about a good time, we gonna have a time. If you talking about a good old time, we gonna have a time. When we all get together, we gonna have a time. If you talking about a good time, we gonna have a time. If you talking about a good time, we gonna have a time. If you talking about a good old time, we gonna have a time. When we all, all get together, mm -hmm. we gonna have a time. If you got the Holy Ghost, we gonna have a time. If you got the Holy Ghost, we gonna have a time. Good God Almighty, if you Got the Holy Ghost. We gonna have a time when we all oh, get together. Mm -hmm. We gonna have a time. You talking about singing and shouting? We gonna have a time. Are you talking about singing and shouting? We gonna have a time. Are you talking about singing and shouting? We gonna have a time when we all. Oh, If you have been born again, we gonna have a time. If you've been born again, we gonna have a time. Good God Almighty, if you have been born again, we gonna have a time. When we all oh, get together, we gonna have a time. When I see my mother, we gonna have a time. When I See my mother, we gonna have a time. Good God Almighty, when I see my mother, we gonna have a time. When we all, all get together, stay right there. All get together, stay right there. All get together, get together. All get together. When we all, all get, get over young. Oh, no more worries. Oh, oh, will we all, all get together? Get together. Oh, get I got a sweet, sweet mother. Oh, I got a sweet, sweet mother. Oh, Waiting on me. Oh, somebody got a father. Oh, somebody got a father. Oh, I got a whole lot of friends. that's oh, waiting on me. Most of all, I see King G. I see King G. I want to tell him, I want to tell him, thank you. Thank you for the grace and mercy. Thank you for the grace and mercy. Get together. When we all get together. Talk about a mighty good time. Oh, Talk about a mighty good time. Oh, every now and then. Oh, every now and then. Oh, I have to look over yonder. Oh, I have to look over yonder. Oh, I see all the singers. Oh, that's going on at home. Oh, 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 get Show love to the God. Oh, get Show the God. Oh, get Show the God. Robert Black. Oh, Heavenly 
choir, singing in the heavenly choir. Oh, good time, good time, good time, good time. Good time. We gon' have good time, good time, good time. Good time. We gon' have, good time. we gon' have. Good time. Are anybody? Good time. Are anybody? Good time. I came to have good time. Good, time. Good, time. Good, time. good time, 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 good time. Got the Holy Ghost. We gonna have fun. If you got the Holy Ghost, we gonna have fun. If you got the Holy Ghost, we gonna have fun. When we all, when we all. of the Lord Amen. and give him praise unto God now and give him praise to the Lord's people. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. For the Lord is truly worthy to be praised. Come on, let's just give him a thank you praise right now. You can determine what you're thanking him for, but just give him a thank you praise right now. Can we call the roll? I'm thankful for another day. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Do I have a witness in here? I'm thankful that he kept me in my right mind. Do I have a witness in here? I'm thankful that the blood is still running warm in my veins. I'm thankful that I have joy divine. I got peace of mind. I got Jesus on my mind. Come on in here. Let's Hallelujah. give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Praise. Now as our ushers pass the basket from the back toward the front, we're going to lift our men's day offering. Each man has been asked to give a spiritual donation of $100. If you don't have the $100, God knows your heart. But if you do have it, he still knows your heart. Amen, somebody. Amen. And the reason we pass a basket and we don't walk is because maybe the brother is struggling a little bit and his significant other may have to help him with the 100 So we want to sort of like help him remain and keep that dignity. Because you can just slip him a little hundred when you're sitting next to him. But if they got to walk and you got to stand up and hand it to him, that won't look good. So we, so we just try to do it discreetly. Amen, somebody? Amen. Let's pray over this $10,000 offering we're about to live right now. Amen. Bow with me. God, thank you for these brethren of this church. Thank you for the men of the Central Missionary Baptist Church who stand on the wall and provide leadership Sunday after Sunday. Thank you for this spiritual donation, not an assessment, a donation of love that they are contributing to it right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Not agenda specific. We, we accept the hundred dollars from anybody want to give the day too. Amen. Yeah, 
Yes, yes. Just keep on. Because it's really true. Somebody's with me that you and you can't be. No matter. No matter how you try. I'll be a witness in here. No matter how you try. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. But guess what you should do? Because Let's give God a hand clap for these good looking ushers. These ushers don't post today. Amen, somebody. Don't your husband significant? Don't they look good in that black and pink today? Amen. Amen. Y'all might extend you with your praise toward the men today for some reason. All we ask of each man is a spiritual donation of a hundred dollars per service.
thank you so much for the effort you have given to our men's day offering. At this time, we ask that Deacon Leroy Wilson, will you come forward, please? You come forward, Deacon Leroy Wilson. Amen. Sir. Come up here with me, Deacon. Right over here on the right hand side, Deke. <laughs> good morning, sir. How you doing? Pretty good, sir. This is a gentleman and a scholar. Amen. All right. They have him on the right side. Amen. Deacon Wilson means so much to me personally and so much to our church family and so much to this community as a whole. He served on the executive board of the Homeowners Association Committee around here for many years and he's been an active voice in this community. And for his work a few months ago, he was honored by the Columbia Business Network to be inducted into their Hall of Fame. Amen. I saw Amen. a big opportunity. Amen, somebody. <laughs> I saw a big article in the paper, and I love to try to encourage our people as much as I possibly can. So when I had the article cut out, we had it framed. We had all the other honorees that night who were inducted into the Hall of Fame, like Chief Albert Jenkins and all of the uh, legislators and everybody who made this wall. But right in the middle of all of them is Leroy Wilson picture. And we wanted to frame this for you, present it to you on behalf of your church family to let you know how proud we are of you and how much we respect you. And thank you for all your contribution to our greater community and for your legacy and contribution to the Central Baptist Church. try to encourage somebody along the way. Amen. 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 We praise God much and much. At this time, we would have an introduction to our speaker by his father. As Deacon Cecil Thomas come forth, we have an introduction to our speaker. All right, Deacon. Father, by selection, by men say quiet, then our speaker for this <laughs> occasion. Let the church say amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is both an honor as well as a privilege to be before you this morning. I do, I do give, of course, honor to the Most High, respect to our under shepherd, as well as his fellow clergy, office members, and friends of this church. Those who have come in good spirit, those who have come in some other spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I welcome all of you here today. And I do have a slight disclaimer. If you would like to hear a regular, a normal introduction, 
I do invite you to come to the 11 o'clock service and join us. Um, because this introduction may be a little different. It may not be a regular introduction. It may be a little bit different. And I, and I have reason. The subject matter may be a little bit different. Maybe a little unusual. A little bit out of the ordinary. So this introduction may be a little bit out of the ordinary and just a little bit different. Um, Cortland Miles Thomas um, is, of course, a son of yours truly and his mama. <laughs> Deaconess Minnie Thomas. Um, he has a twin sister who uh, unfortunately could not be with us today. Um, she called last night, I guess, about 1 o'clock or 1.30. She had landed in Colorado Springs uh, for a work assignment and could not be with us today. But hopefully she's tuned in to the online program. Uh, Colin is a uh, graduate, graduate, and most of you know this information, so I'll be, I'll be brief on this part. Uh, graduate of the University of South Carolina, where he had a dual major in marketing and human resource management, and as well as minors in advertising and public relations. While at the University of South Carolina, Colin, of course, without question, participated in many, many activities there on campus. Um, uh, the uh, Association of Black Students, uh, the uh, student government uh, was on the executive board as well as the cabinet of the um, student government while there at the University of South Carolina many, the gospel choir, and many other organizations, too numerous to mention. While there, of course, at the University of South Carolina, he received, uh, again, one of those too numerous to mention things, uh, several awards uh, given by the university and other organizations uh, there on the campus of the university. I won't go into all of those by listing them. Um, but I believe he would like for those few of you that don't know, uh, that he is a member of, I'm going to look back at, uh, at, at, at Deacon Bryan. Uh, he is a member of the mighty, mighty Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, <laughs> where uh, he served as president of that uh, organization, the um, Kappa Iota chapter, uh, while he was in um, San Antonio. He also serves as vice president of the chapter there. These are all things that took place while he was at the University of South Carolina. Uh, in 2015, he moved to Birmingham, Alabama to be a marketing specialist for the Sodexo Corporation. While there, he had spearheaded many campaigns and things of that nature to do with the marketing field. Uh, many of his Thoughts and ideas are still in use there nationwide for that company. He then took an internal move to San Antonio, Texas in October of 2016. In 2016, um, while he moves to the USAA corporate headquarters there in San Antonio, uh, which happens to be the largest uh, account that Sodexo has in North America. Uh, while there, he worked uh, in the marketing, having purview over various and different marketing plans. And just recently, within the last few weeks, he has moved 
Um, let me back up a little bit. While he was there, I don't want to leave this out. He was um, a member of the Covenant Community Church while there in San Antonio and worked there in various capacities uh, where they're under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Grant um, there at the Covenant Community Church. Upon moving back to South Carolina, he's taking a job currently uh, with the Aramark Corporation as the district marketing manager. In that capacity, he has purview over dining services for marketing in higher education for several schools in South Carolina. Uh, just to name a few of them, uh, Winthrop University, Francis Marion University, Coastal Carolina University, University of South Carolina at Aiken, and there's quite a list of them that he does have um, the marketing duties for. Side note, he is currently the youngest district marketing manager in the United States. The, And like I say, if you, if you want to get some more formalized information, uh, come back to the 11 o'clock service. Um, but what I wanted to do with the rest of my little time is to, is to, if you will, let me stake my claim on what I said in the beginning. The subject matter is a little different. And to do this, Reverend, if I might, I need to call a couple of witnesses. <laughs> they say that they say that association brings back brings about assimilation. I need to call a couple of witnesses. First witness, come to the stand. The doctor, I don't even remember his name, at the neonatal unit in Tupelo, Mississippi where he was born. The doctor said, after taking a look at some of those pictures, what they call them, sonograms, and whatever they call the things, he, says, he said, the little boy, he's a little different. <laughs> he has turned himself, and he's headed to be born. Not knowing that it wasn't time yet, I don't know if this is true or not, but I just imagine that he told his sister, it's a big world out there. <laughs> we need to get out of here. <laughs> and we need to catch some of that world that's out there. Now, sister, you can stay if you want to, but I'm getting out. <laughs> he is a little bit different. Call the next witness. The next witness is his mother. When he was about six, seven years old, she was uh, giving him a life lesson about perhaps something, I don't remember the exact subject matter, but it was about listening and doing what, you know, you were instructed to do. And then she added that, listen, son, you are going to have to work for somebody one day. And I guess, and then she said it a couple of times. And I guess he thought about it for a couple of minutes. He looked back and said, but mama, they gonna be working for me. Right. He, he was just a little bit different. Ah, yeah. uh, I call the next witness. The children at Camp Burnt Gin. when he was um, 
in high school. Instead of taking some higher paying, more glamorous job for a summer internship, he chose to go to Camp Bernadine. Those who are aware of Camp Bernadine, it's a, it's a sleepaway camp for um, children and young adults of varying disabilities. Whereas his responsibilities were to take care of them 24 hours a day. Where he had to feed them. Some of them he had to clothe. And he had to take care of their personal hygiene, which would be difficult for most of us to do. But he chose to do that. He's just a little bit different. Let me, let me, if you will, allow me to call my final witness. We'd gone to a restaurant on the campus of the University of South Carolina. And this witness is, is this, this witness is a lady, I do not know her name, unfortunately. But she worked there at, one, at that restaurant. And she said something that I, will never, that I will never forget. She asked and said, uh, y'all are the parents of Cortland, aren't you? I said, yes. Cortland is a little bit different. Every time he comes here, he doesn't just speak to us. He gives us a hug. He asks about my children and grandchildren, how they are doing. These other students have a tendency, for some reason, to look straight through us. They don't know who we are. Even though we serve them, they act as though we are their servants. He takes the time to talk to us and found out how we are doing. <clears throat> he is just a little bit different. Will not prolong the time, so at this time, I will do as I look back again at Deacon Bryan, as the gospel singers would sometimes say, I get ready to bring to your front. A young man who is just a little bit different. And I heard somebody say one time that the anointing makes the difference. After the singing of our 2017 Men's Day Chorus, you will hear from that little boy who decided it was time for him to be born. From that little boy who said that they're going to be working for me. From that little boy who chose to work in some undesirable circumstance for the good of those children with disabilities. My boy, <laughs> Cortland Miles Thomas.
one day, one day, I was walking along. Walking along. I heard a voice. I saw no one. The voice I heard sounds so sweet. I knew it was Jesus talking to me. Just as soon I recognized his voice. I'm talking about Jesus, oh, that man from Galilee, oh, one day, I walked along, I heard a voice, I saw no one, the voice I heard,
from Galilee. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for our 2017 Men's Day Choir. Amen. I hear you. We, we, we are up here singing right along with you. First, I want to say good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning to our pastor, Reverend Ezel, for this opportunity, the 2017 Men's Day Committee, our officers, our members, and our guests. Again, I must thank my father for that introduction, for it was certainly different. <laughs> I don't have to recognize my parents because you know who they are, Deacon Cecil Thomas and Deaconess Minnie Thomas. I do want to, to welcome our, our guest who joined us today. <laughs> Friends and family, I see you, Miss Ford. Thank you so much for coming this morning and others who might be here this morning. Again, thank you for coming. Uh, I've moved back to South Carolina in the last month and as I was sitting in my office and I think I can say that now that I have the pleasure of working from home, uh, thinking about the message that we were going to bring forth today. I had several thoughts going through my mind that were more contemporary, but I'll just save that for our youth. However, my brothers and sisters, there is a word today. As I reminded you the last time that I stood before you that I might not be a teacher, but I do want you to learn a lesson. I might not be a minister, but I hope that the Spirit will speak through me. I may not be a preacher, but there is a sermon to deliver. As I mentioned, I was with you last year in 2016 for our graduate Sunday, and I shared a message entitled Embrace the impossible. We, we, we talked about how we had to give it to him. We cannot allow the devil to distract us, and we must give our all to God. Amen. The crux of the message and the central theme was that we must have faith, that size, that grain of a mustard seed, and put that faith into action in order to embrace the impossible. Well, today I want to focus on the specificity of our actions and the level of intentionality that we as men should take action with. All right. Many people will say, write the vision and make it plain, but we cannot see far enough in the future because of the predicament of our present. I believe that if we are to be Christian men striving for excellence, our actions should be specific and intentional. And let's get to the word. So if you turn with me to the book of Job. The book of Job, and, and the way I find Job is I open the Bible to the middle, to Psalms, and flip back just one. <laughs> Job, the book of Job. Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33. And when you find it, if you'll stand to your feet. Job chapter 33, beginning at the 8th verse. Job chapter 33, beginning at the 8th verse. And the word reads, Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy word saying, I am clean without transgression, I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasions against me, where he counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks, and he marketh all of my paths. Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee, that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings of the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. 
and ending with verse 18, he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Amen. Job 33, verses 8 through 18, the word of God for the people of God. Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon that distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see And if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though the storms keep on in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon that distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the wind keeps on blowing, my life, my soul, it has been anchored in the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. I realize sometimes we're going to be taught. Sweat because he holds me fast. So dark the day, clouds in the sky, 
I know he's alright because Jesus is mine. I said my soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My, 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 my soul is anchored. The billows may roll, the breakers may dash. I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark the day, clouds in the sky. I know he's alright because Jesus is mine, my soul. It has been anchored in the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is my soul. It has been anchored. We thank you for allowing to see another men's day at Central Baptist Church. We know that we would not be here had it not been for you, for your goodness, your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, God, for anchoring our soul in you. We know that although the storms keep on coming, our pastor has taught us that all we have to do is rely on God's word, stay in his will, and continue to witness. We know that if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, we can tell the mountain to move and it will move. I ask a blessing today over these, that's your people within the sound of my voice. As we bring forth your word today, I ask that you preach to me in order to teach through me. We know that your word is already blessed and I ask that you allow the word to encourage, educate, empower, and engage someone today. We thank you for this opportunity to proclaim the gospel and share the message that you have provided us with. In your son Jesus' name that we all pray, say amen. 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 Job 33, Job 33. And I want to look at verse 14 and verse 15. The King James Version says, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings of the bed. The Amplified Bible translates verse 14 as, For God speaks once and even twice, yet nobody notices it, including Job. But the Message Bible translates verse 14 as, God always answers one way or Another, even when people do not recognize his presence. Yeah. I just want to talk for a few minutes on the topic of what do you see? What do you see? As children, we might remember the nursery rhyme, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Oftentimes we read childhood books not only to entertain our children, but to assist with the development of a child's eyesight. Our vision at a young age is fairly fuzzy. Babies can only make out light and small shapes. Newborns can only see about 18 to 15 inches away in front of them, just far enough to clearly make out the face of the person that is holding them. As we grow and mature as people, we are able to make out movement and we can actually start remembering and recognizing the faces that we see. As we continue to mature past that point and developing into a toddler and into a young age, babies, we can begin to see long distances, we can start to recognize ourselves in the mirror, and we can fully develop our eyesight or our vision. 
It is in that same manner today that if we celebrate Men's Day and we are to be Christian men striving for excellence, we must fully develop our vision as we continue to mature in levels of Christ. We must look in the mirror and ask ourselves, what is it that we see? Better yet, what are we doing to improve what we see? As believers, we are gifted and blessed with a set of spiritual sensory organs. Today, we are focusing on the eyes of faith to reveal more of reality than physical eyes can see. Donna Lawrence wrote a song that says, you're not a natural being having a spiritual experience, but you are a spiritual being living in this natural experience. Because all that is going on around us in the world and in this country, we have to ask ourselves the question, what is our eyesight like? Right. And I don't mean your physical eyesight, but the eyes of our hearts. Right. Do we have 2020 vision where we can clearly recognize his presence? In our text today that we read to your hearing, we have Job, a wealthy man, as we all Bible scholars know that he was living in us in the Syrian desert. Job 1 and 1 says that he was blameless and upright. He feared God and he shunned evil. So therefore, we know that Job was a devout, God-fearing, dedicated, and a pious man. However, we know that Job encountered intense hardships and even greater pain. We know that Job lost all that he had, his possessions, his cattle, his oxen, and even his children and his family. We as believers have to understand that the vicissitudes of life will vex you on your voyage to victory. Oh yes, we will have to visit the valley every now and again, but we know that we are going to have Job-like hardships, but we understand what the word says in Romans 8 and 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. See, I'm just talking about what do you see? Not to be before you long, because my mother told me that if I stood up here too long, folks would stop listening to me. So I just want to get right into it. As we continue to pursue excellence, we must put our spiritual senses into perspective. I see three short areas that we must focus on, but that are critical to our faith and our spiritual eyesight. The first thing that I see is in Job chapter 32, the previous verse, verses 1 through 5, so that we can provide a quick character assessment. The first thing that if we are going to see with our spiritual glasses, we must first assess our relationships. In Job 32, verse 1 through 5, it reads as follows. Job's three friends now fell silent. They were talked out because Job would not budge an inch and he would not admit to an ounce of guilt. Then his friend lost his temper. He blazed out in anger against Job for pitting the three friends against him because neither had come up with an answer nor they had proved Job wrong. Elihu had waited with Job while they spoke because they were all older than he was. But when he saw the other three men had exhausted their arguments, it was his time to explode with pent-up anger. We learn from that text that the context is that Job was having a debate with his three friends. After his debate, the friend that is referenced and in some versions, it names him as Elihu, a variant of the spelling of the name Elijah steps in. See, that name means he is my God. Although you may not have heard of Elihu, his actions in the book of Job suggest a strong connection to the great prophet, that of Elijah, so that you have a reference point to be familiar with. 
As we know, Elijah was described as the defender of God and God's forerunner. And in a similar way, Elihu has vigorously defended God's justice and preceded the appearance of God with a speech focused on how good God is. Yet Job's relationship with his friend allows Job to realize that God's spirit makes wisdom possible. See, we're just assessing our relationships if we are to see clearly. So the only problem that I see with his friend is that his pronouncement of divine retribution. It is imperative that we use our spiritual senses to see that everything that you go through is not a direct result of what you have done. You know, I, 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 when my father talked about when I worked at Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama as the marketing manager, it was new for me that I had to work uh, on most Saturdays and Sundays, especially during the football season, because we had a limited management team and I had to work catering and other university events. But as the good church-going, pious man like Job was, I had to attend a church service. There were many churches who offered multiple different service times in the Bible Belt state of Alabama, 8, 9, 30, 11, 12, 1, 2, 30, 4, 4, 30, and 6 o'clock. So it did not matter when I had to work, I had an opportunity to worship. However, in my travels, I encountered what I call a lot of fire and brimstone preaching. The preachers would explain how you're in a pit because of the pitfall of sin, and the only access you have to the palace is the achievement of perfection. Divine retribution. I, I, I recently left San Antonio. I went to another church, and there um, I was looking at the different contemporary churches, and I, I saw that they started having service on Monday night. So I said, oh, I'm going to stop by this, this church, and I'm not going to name the church, but I went by on one particular Monday evening, and the pastor, a young pastor, probably no more than 30, he got up and said, well, God is telling me that you can pay your way out of sin. The more money that you might throw at the altar, the pastor would say, oh, healing, delivery, <laughs> victory, and breakthrough. <laughs> See, that, 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 that fire and brimstone teaching, but because we are di disciplined disciples who can decipher the word, I understand that this is simply not the case. See, we are assessing our relationships. As we celebrate Men's Day, we must ask ourselves, who do we surround ourselves with? How are our friends impacting our lives? If we hang out with people who never go anywhere or do anything, we just might need to assess our relationships. If you are always the right one in the circle and everybody always goes with what you have to say, we might need to assess our relationships. If your friends always encourage you to sin because you are my best friend, we might, to assess, might need to assess our relationships. I have to understand that we have to assess our relationships. In college and still today, my mother would call me and the first question she would ask is, what are you doing and who are you with? <laughs> Just like Job, we have to look around and see who we are surrounding ourselves with. I understand that at that time she was assessing the relationship, but as we are celebrating Men's Day today, the real question is what are we doing to strengthen our relationship with our ultimate friend, our Father in Heaven? As men, and I can attest to this, that we often get caught up in our feelings, but we forsake the Father in doing so. Sometimes we are so obsessed with masculinity that we forget who our sovereignty belongs to. Men have a secret code language, and I cannot reveal that to you today, but nobody else can understand it but men. I refer to it as the barbershop talk. <laughs> the things that you hear in the barbershop often detail everything that is going on with somebody's family, somebody's children, what is going on, who belongs to who, and who's cheating on who, and who knows what about somebody else, but sometimes 
we often cannot tell everybody about what is going on in our lives. You can't tell everyone where you are going, and you can certainly not take everybody with you. So. I'm talking about assessing our relationships. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, in, in verse 7, it says, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Daniel alone saw the vision. Isn't it interesting that there were many men there, but only one saw it? So if even those around you don't see it, it is still yours. Does anybody see their healing on the way? Does anybody see their breakthrough on the way? Does anybody see their new house on the way? Does anybody see their new car on the way? Does somebody see a mended relationship? Uh, I see it, I see it, I see it because we have assessed our relationship. It is men's day, and if we are to be men striving for excellence, the second action that we must take is we must activate our responsibility. And we learn in our Bible lesson today that Joel's responsibility, his ultimate responsibility, was to remain faithful to God. Is that our responsibility today? When I was writing this message, I originally said, accept our responsibility. But then it dawned on me that acceptance was only half the battle. Most of ours are already there. We accept what is ours, but we do not take the necessary action in order to be responsible over it. Ask yourself, it is Men's Day, what is our responsibility as men? I don't believe the issue is that we don't understand the responsibility, but I truly believe that we have not activated our responsibility. Now, I don't want to step on any toes, but for example, our work in the church. I truly believe deep down in my heart that there are more than four or five people who can cook. I truly believe there are more than four or five people who can operate the sound system and the video cameras on Sunday morning. I believe there are more than four or five people who can stand at the door and usher. I, 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 you know, it's Men's Day, so we must activate our responsibility. I'm going to leave that alone and let you think about that for a minute. But it is ultimately our responsibility not only to complete that work, but it's also our responsibility to enforce the village mentality. It is truly a blessing that you are a father figure in your child's life. But what about the rest of the children? As men, we are called to be leaders in our families, in our homes, in our communities. All that is going on to denigrate the character of African American men, we must not only see what is happening, but we must stand firm and take action. Men, I plead to you today that it is imperative for us to ignite our ingenuity that we continue the pursuit of this excellence. We oftentimes become apathetic because someone else has already done it or we are expecting someone else to do it. Dr. King said, I'd like for somebody to say that one day Martin L. King tried to love somebody. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. And yes, say that I was a drum major for righteousness. See, Dr. King activated his responsibility. <coughs> See, uh, my, my sister being the political and, and, and theological scholar that she is, we talked about liberation theology. See, liberation theology tells us that our faith is not passive, but it is active. We cannot boldly sit by while our faith just sits to the side. If anything, the activation of our faith should be aggressive, just as our aggressive as our walk with God. We must be champions for good and truth. That means that it is our responsibility never to be silent in the face of adversity. We are men, are we not? Amen. 
Certainly, if Jesus could flip tables, then you can certainly speak up. Congressman Maxine Waters conducted an interview a few days ago at the Congressional Black Caucus Town Hall on civil rights. She essentially said that she expects other leaders to stand by her and beside her. And I quote, don't come here and tell me, Maxine, you keep on doing what you do. But when are you going to give me some support? So instead of saying, no, you go, Auntie Maxine. No, you go. I ask you today that will we progress because of you or in spite of you? You see, we're just talking about what we see today as we activate our responsibility in the pursuit of excellence. You see, we, we talked about thus far how, how Job has really had to assess his relationship with his friends to ensure that they are not pouring toxicity into his heart. We really had to understand as we are looking about what we see, we assess our relationships to monitor the company that we keep. All right. yeah. All right. Second, we, we talked about how we must activate our responsibilities, so that we are called as men to be drum majors for justice. We are called to be the head and not the tail because we have to activate our responsibility. But third and finally, as I make my way to a close, we must lastly acknowledge our Redeemer. Yeah, if we look back at our text, Job in verse, uh, chapter 33, verse 13, thinks that God cannot hear him. It says, but let me tell you, Job, this is his friend Elihu speaking, you're wrong, you're dead wrong. God is far greater than any human, so how dare you haul him into court and then complain that he will not answer your charges. You see, God always answers one way or another, even when people don't recognize his presence. My brothers and sisters, it is a comfort, it is a joy to know that God always answers one way or another. Again, remind us that we have to acknowledge our Redeemer. Yeah. I know that I've been in situations before where I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. And sometimes I don't even think about how I'm going to go through it. Yeah. Situations like that remind us to acknowledge our Redeemer because that situation truly displays the evidence of God that the hand of God is working in each and every one of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to remind you right here that it should not take that kind of act, though, for us to acknowledge our Redeemer. Yeah. Some people say, when I, I, I go out and do something, that I just got lucky today. Yeah. But we as Christian believers and disciples of Christ know that it is not luck, but it right. is truly a blessing from on high. Amen. Because you have to remember, we serve a God who will turn a mess into a miracle, yeah. pain into promise, yes, and dead weight into deliverance. Oprah, billionaire, says, the voices of the world be your friends, your mother, your cousin, your father, your boss, can drown out the voice of God if you are not careful. As men, oftentimes we get caught up so much in our day to day that we sometimes forget to acknowledge our Redeemer. A lot is going on. Things may be happening in the world. Things may be happening with your children, with your job, with your finances. But again, I remind you that God will be a calm that will give you confidence in crises as long as we acknowledge our Redeemer. I ask you as we talk today about what do you see, I truly ask you to put on your spiritual glasses and look at what you see. Today, I implore you, I encourage you to take action when we walk out of the door and take our rightful place as men. You see, vision is very critical to what we do each and every day. 
There was an old man who, 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 it was time to retake his driver's test. His walk had gotten a little bit slow and eyes a little bit dim, but he said, I'm going to press my way out anyhow. So he goes down to the DMV and he goes to take the driver's test in a separate room and he's having a little bit of trouble. The person at the desk says, sir, you're going to have to take your glasses off because we need to assess your vision. We need to know what you can see. The man said, well, well, we will try, but I'm not exactly sure what we can see. So she has him look down into the lens and says, tell me what you can read on line five. He looks at line five and he squints and he's up in age and he's a man that has been faithful just like Job and over his wealth and he just cannot read the lines. He looks at line four and, and he still cannot read the lines. Well, he looks at line three and yet again he cannot read the lines. See, he said, hold on one minute. He took a moment, he stepped back, and he prayed, and he said, well, wait a minute. Let me look at line five. He said, line five, I squinted, and I said, wait a minute, I, I think I see M-G-I-S-F. He started to slowly smile, and, she, and he said, oh, yes, oh, yes, I see M-G-I-S-F. And the woman asked him, why are you smiling? We're trying to take an eye exam. He said, but let me tell you, because my grace is sufficient for you. As he continued up, he said, wait a minute, line four is becoming more and more clear to me. G-W-F-T-G, that God works for the good of them who love the Lord. He continued on, he went to line three, and he said, I-T-M-T-T. I took my trouble to the Lord and I cried out and he answered, oh, my prayer. I'm asking you, what do you see? He gets up to line two and at this point he has to stand up and he says, I-S-A-V-O-A, -A, I saw a vision of a new heaven and a new earth. Oh, when he gets to line one, line one, it says, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, because all, not some of my help, comes from the Lord. I ask you today, what do you see? What do you see? Come on, if you know God has been good to you, I ask you, what do you see? Do you see him as a way maker? Do you see him as a deliverer? A wheel in the middle of a wheel? A doctor in a sick room? Come on, somebody, what do you see? proclamation, man, proclaiming that which you had prepared. Amen. It takes a lot of work to prepare a message substantiated by scripture, pulling the background of the text and intertwining the scripture in the text and pulling your points from the text. That just doesn't come overnight, y'all. It's without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord has his hand upon Corbin Town. After hearing such a marvelous word, we're going to extend our invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be someone up under the sound of my voice after hearing that message. 
Maybe you have attended a church for a while and you want to be a part of our church family. You may come by letter by your Christian experience or candidate for baptism. As a choir leads us in our invitation hymn, the door of the church is open, let us stand. Question is, will I ever leave you to answer it? No. Pastor here at the Central Baptist Church, lift him in much prayer. For we know God has all healing power. Doesn't matter what the circumstance or the situation is, we take it before our Lord in prayer. Continue to pray for Sister Ann Irving from our church as I visit with her. I told her I would call her name before the Lord. Because when you're going through and you're being shy, you need to know that somebody is praying for you. Somebody have you on their mind. Somebody took the time to call your name in prayer. 
other name we may not have before us, we still go to the Lord in prayer. Rex Reverend Wilson will come at this time. Let us all bow our heads. Father God in heaven, it's once again, Father, we come around your altar saying thank you. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for the word that has been spoken to our hearing, asking us what do you see. Now, Father, we are asking on this men's day that you would continue to bless each and every man that is standing here, each and every boy, each and every one of these young men. Father, we realize that you are in control. Father, there's so much going on in this world, so much going on in this United States, even this community, this city of Columbia. So many of our young men, Father, is giving away their lives, not realizing, Father, that they can't pick it up again. Father, they are looking for someone, and whom they are looking for, they can easily find if they will go on to their knees. Because, Father, you said all we have to do is call and believe on your son, Jesus, and that you will be with us. So, Father, we ask it now that you would just breathe over our city. Breathe over our young men. Let them know that the future is theirs, Father. Let them know, Father, that all they have to do is just call on you. You would hear and you would answer. And Father, we ask now that you continue to let us be the men that you have called. Father, let us be the Nehemiahs. Let us be strong enough to tell the men who are calling on us that we will not come down until the wall is completed. Let them know, no matter what you say about me, no matter how you talk about me, no matter how you scandalize my name, a man I am and a man I will continue to be. I will continue to be the man that God have called me to be. So Father, we asking on this men's day that you continue to bless each and every man. Continue to bless the men that are here and the men that are not here. The men that are serving in foreign lands, the men that are locked up in prison cells, the men that are lying in hospital room, come and let them home. All of your men, Father, continue to bless each and every one. And Father, we ask that you bless the name that have been called that are seeking prayer. Father, we may not know all we need to know, but we know that if we were called on your name, that you would hear and answer our prayer. Because we realize, Father, that those that are lying in the hospital room, you are a doctor there. Those that are locked in prison cells waiting to go to court, you are a lawyer there. And Father, those that are just don't know you, we know that you are available everywhere. So Father, we ask in this day that you continue to bless. Bless our pastor. Bless the man who has spoken your word. Bless the choir members, bless the ushers, bless the cooks. Father, bless every man. <coughs> bless us, Father. Bless us that we might be a blessing to someone. And Father, we ask that when it's your time to call and our time to answer, that you will give us a place in your kingdom. Bless each and every one, those that are standing around the altar and standing in the pew. Bless us, Father, and we'll be careful and mindful to give you all the praise and all the glory. For us in Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's children say amen. 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 Now the questions are... Will I ever leave you? Will I do your will? And will Jesus return? Oh, and yes, so, 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 so. Will I ever leave you? Will I do your will? Yes. 
coming soon. So, 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 so. Proud to leave and let us give some expressions out. Again, let's thank God for this word from Cortland on today. Let's give God praise for the word that we receive on today. We thank God for all the wonderful participation we've had for this last month and a half of our men's day services and the fishing trip, deep sea that is still playing. We just have been having a ball. We're gonna have activities all year long, amen, to strengthen the body of the brethren at this church. We thank them so much. This year, we did not have an official chairperson of our Men's Day Committee. We did it by group assignment. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. And we, we just trusted those individuals who we had in place, amen. So we thank God for the wonderful work that was done. We started out with the men preparing a fish fry and a movie uh, with our senior citizen committee for our senior citizen. The men did all the cooking, amen. And we thank God so much for the effort of those. I came out, I think it was Deacon John Elvis and Deacon Ronnie Taylor and other guys within the kitchen that were cooking all the fish and doing our outside. We thank God for just a team effort. All the food and the different things that we had, Brother Clarence, going to send a plan. This brother did a marvelous job of laying in himself for the main thing. I know he had other people working with him, but I call him his right hand. Anthony, stand up. You were there every step of the way, brother, with Clarence helping everything. Thank y'all so much, man. Thank y'all down the line. They covered the food all the time, had everything covered, and we thank God much for them. Let's thank God for Brother Evan Knight that we gave him, Deacon Evan Knight that we gave him assignment of having all our senior ushers and the young ushers. Let's give all our ushers a wonderful hand. Thank you so much. On that Friday night, we had a sing-out, and Deacon Willie Bryant was in charge of the sing-out, and he had a staff working with him on the sing-out. Let's give all of them a wonderful hand. And then our choir today, they did an excellent job under the direction of Anthony Out. Let's give all of them a wonderful hand for our musical choir. Amen. We had so many people working. Am I missing any group? I think I covered everybody. And all I did was I just steered the ship. <laughs> Amen. I was getting daily reports, daily information. And we, I like the way this worked this year. We're going to do the same thing next year. Amen. We ain't Amen. having no chairman and all that stuff. We're going to do the same thing next year. Assign people, trust people, work together, get the egos out of the way, and let God have his way. Amen. That's all we're going to do. We can do the same thing on next year. Well, thank y'all so much for everything. Let us repair the lead. We have a closing selection, Anthony. Okay, we have a closing selection. Amen. We'll give a verse or two of the closing selection, then we'll stand and we'll roll into the benediction. Amen. That's Brother Glenn. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 All right, Brother Glenn. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How many can wave your hand this morning? All right. Huh? How many got a praying mother out there? All right, huh? man. Huh? 
If I can say one word, I just wave my hand. If I could say one word, I just wave.
He's had me love the church today. I pray for my mother. I pray for my mother. Lord, be thanks for the day that y'all have a mother out here. When you school that morning, I'll now I walk up in the building. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yes, sir. Hallelujah! Let the church say Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brookman. Brookman from down there around North South Carolina. <laughs> down there through Swanson, make your way through Wolford, and you're going to come up the north. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord for our benediction. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and present you fault before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, both glory and majesty, dominion and power, and his now and ever. Just roll over Anthony, if I could wave my hand, and we'll go out with y'all singing us out. In Jesus' name, amen.